Hey guys, it's Katie and this is My Life with Veds. Someone asked me to do a video of my Veds symptoms and my diagnosis and I haven't done that in a while so I figured it's a good opportunity to do it again. I think I did it in some of my older videos but that was right after diagnosis so I'm sure I was in a brain fog. I'm not sure how concise and intelligible it is. So. Here it is. So um, I'm gonna start with my VEDS features or characteristics. I don't really call them symptoms because they're really, they're just characteristics of a genetic disorder. Um, so it's a lot of like how I look and things that have been with me my whole life. So some of the characteristics of vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome that I have are almond-shaped eyes, which is apparently a thing, and a thin little nose. Uh, that was something that my entire life my mom like doted over, she loved my little nose and I was just like, oh, I hate my nose, you know. Um, what else? So I have thin translucent skin. I'm not sure if you can see it in this light, but the veins are visible pretty much over my whole body. Kind of, yeah, you can see that. So there's veins. So my whole body is pretty much like that. Um, and it's very fragile. So I've had 15 stitches from a cat jumping off my lap too hard. That's how fragile my skin is. Um, what else? Hypermobility of the small joints. So that's like my thumbs, my fingers. I can push this one in and out. It's just, this makes can openers really, really difficult. They're like the bane of my existence. And when I finally bought an electric can opener, that was one of the best purchases of my entire life. <laughs> um, I, also, I also have what's called acrogeria, and that is like aging of the hands and the feet. So that's what my hands look like. They're wrinkly and weird. And if you saw them without my face, you probably might think I'm a little bit older than I am. But they've been like this my whole life. It's something I was made fun of for when I was a kid and never really understood why they looked that way. I was very insecure about it, and everybody would ask me, what's wrong with your hands? You know, like here, try this lotion, try this. I was tested for scleroderma like three times because of it. So those are my features. Um, diagnosis. So I'm going to take you back to 2013 because it's kind of a little bit of a long story. So 2013, I had been dealing with some ringworm on my arm for over a year. And it was here and here. And it looked like ringworm. And I tried treatment for it for over a year. I was on like different ringworm treatments. Try, went to the doctor for ringworm treatment, didn't work. Um, I tried to cut it off. I tried to burn it off with wort remover acid, like salicylic acid, multiple times, and it would just come back. And it was one of the most frustrating things. And I finally went to a dermatologist in 2013. I walked into that dermatologist's office, or he walked into the office. He took one look at me and he's like, you have something systemic going on and I don't I don't want to see you until you're tested for scleroderma first. And I was like, ah, oh, I've already been tested for scleroderma. I don't have it. And he's like, well, things can change and you should get tested again. And I was just like, so off to a rheumatologist I went to get tested for scleroderma. And he thought I had scleroderma because of my hands. And like I have hair thinning too, which I think is part of my VEDS because the collagen problem. Um, so he really, he wanted to make sure I didn't have scleroderma, and I didn't. So I came back, and it was like two biopsies on my arm in order to get a diagnosis of perforating dermatosis. And there's like three types of perforating dermatosis that were on the possibilities, and he circled one, and he called it elastosis perforans serpiginosa, which is where your elastic tissue under the skin is like pushing up through the skin, in a serpentine or like circular snake-like pattern. That's pretty much what that means. And froze it off with liquid nitrogen and it never came back. So all that time I had done all this stuff to my arm and it, all I really needed was liquid nitrogen. But um, he said he wanted me to go to a geneticist because that elastosis perforans serpiginosa is pretty rare and it's usually only seen in people with like Down syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So I know I didn't have Down syndrome, 
And I didn't really think I had Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome either, but I was like, okay, I'll go see a geneticist, whatever. So before I went to go see the geneticist, I was on a waiting list for a while, and I looked up the disorder online and was like, okay, I can see some similarities here between the vascular type and me. I could see, like, the visible veins and the older hands and the hypermobility of the of the small joints and the big eyes and the nose. And I was like, huh, this is kind of weird, you know, coincidence. So I went to the geneticist in 2014 and she told me I didn't have the vascular type and that I didn't meet any criteria for Ehlers-Danlos or like I didn't meet the criteria for any form of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. I'm like, are you sure about the vascular type? Because that kind of looks like me. And she's like, nah, no one has that type. You really don't have to worry about it. So off I went. Fast forward a couple years later, in March of 2016, I woke up with some very, very severe neck pain. Um, I literally woke up with it, and it felt like my head was going to fall off. I don't know why I went to work that day. I went to work, it was like, I couldn't turn my neck at all. It really, like, any kind of movement really just, it was incredibly painful. And the entire memory of that is like this bluish yellow color like I was in so much pain I remember feeling like I was going to pass out I was so much pain and I didn't go to the hospital because so every time I've gone to the hospital for pain they prescribe muscle laxers and anti-inflammatories and send me on my way or something so a couple days after it happened I went to my doctor and was prescribed muscle relaxers and anti-inflammatories and it took about three months for it to get better and then again it just happened one day it was better and then I reached for something like I was getting ready in the morning and I'm like a speed demon in the morning so I'm sure my blood pressure goes up and stuff and it's reaching for something and then boom happened again a few months later happened again I think it happened four or five times one of the mornings I woke up with it so bad that I was dizzy and nauseous and I didn't feel like I could actually stand and I remember calling a family member and being like please take me to the hospital and I went to the hospital and they said, you pull the muscle, go home and take some Motrin. And that was it. So in January of 2017, I had tried physical therapy, which made it worse. And I was trying all sorts of things that were making it worse. And I was going to be worked up for thoracic outlet syndrome. So thoracic outlet syndrome is basically a compression of either the nerves or an artery in this brachial plexus is what it's called. And right through your collarbone there, everything kind of comes together to get through this area and then branches back out. And so sometimes if you have problems, it can cause compression of something and cause problems, pain problems. So they're working me up for that and the vascular surgeon that I was going to see was going to be doing like an ultrasound or something of like that. And I was having lunch with my brother and he jokes around and he goes, well, they won't even have to scan anything because you can see all your veins anyway. So later that night, I'm sitting there and I'm like, somebody missed something like it just hit me that somebody missed something that there is more going on and that was the thing that triggered it was that like joke about being able to see through my skin it was like well, why why is that you know so I started going back through my medical history again and I started back at the the thing that I knew was the most concrete clue which was that elos elastosis perforans serpiginosa and that clue in Taylor's Danlos syndrome so pulled up the report from that saw the Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, went to the National Institute of Health website for vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and saw the vascular type. And immediately it just dawned on me that that was what I had. I had no doubts. I was 99.99% sure that this is what was causing my issues and it described me way too well. So then from that point on, it was a three month fight to try to get a genetic test and I ended up having to call the geneticist back where I was living before and basically begging them to send me a genetic test because I was living all the way across the country now in a different area and I was on a year waiting list to see Dr. Byers and I didn't feel like I could wait that long with all my pain that I was having and stuff so after I got the genetic test I came back positive for beds obviously and Got to see Dr. Byers within the same month, which was amazing. And then I got scanned, got my arteries scanned a couple months later, and 
had a pseudoaneurysm that is in my left internal carotid, which I think they come from dissections, which would make sense with all of my symptoms that the spontaneous severe pain like that. Um, so I think I've had a few dissections in my life now that probably went under the radar because we didn't know I had beds. So the pseudoaneurysm is there and a pseudoaneurysm is like, so in, in a true aneurysm, like you have the artery, like here's a, here's your artery like pipe, right? And there's three layers to the wall and and then the aneurysm like they, they balloon out. So all the layers kind of balloon out. And a pseudoaneurysm, from my understanding, that inner layer breaks or tears, which is a dissection, but then the outer layers like balloon out. But that it's because of that inner layer that's torn though. So it's more like a bubble. Looks like a bubble. So that's it. That was my diagnosis story. And I hope that helped. Now I'm, now I know, you know, if severe pain happens, it's probably something dissecting or something rupturing, or organ rupturing, something really severe like that where I can't, <laughs> I almost pass out. It's, it's probably more serious than a pulled muscle. So um, thanks for listening. If you found my channel because you have beds or you think you might have VEDS and you're waiting for a test or a family member has VEDS, like, big, big heart to you because this is not a fun thing to have and we're just doing the best we can. So thank you for listening and I'll talk to you guys soon.